Hello all and welcome to New Bible Study. I'm glad you're joining again and I want to share the book of Habakkuk again and we continue in Habakkuk 2 verse 9 to 11. Woe to him who gets evil gain for his house, to set his nest on high, to be safe from the reach of harm. You have devised shame for your house, but by cutting off many peoples. You have forfeited your life, for the stone will cry out from the wall, and the beam from the woodwork respond. About the background, we have caught up in our overview of the Bible history to the time of the book of Habakkuk. We will continue the story when we begin to study Malachi. Let's dive into some interesting points. Woe to him who gets evil gain for his house, to set his nest on high. The Babylonians exuded arrogance, as they believed that they were untouchable, completely safe from harm. The capital city of Babylon was famous for its impenetrable walls. They were so strong, they thought, no one can beat us. Hammurabi first encircled the city with walls, but Nebuchadnezzar made it stronger by constructing with three rings of walls that were 40 feet tall. The Greek historian Herodotus wrote that the walls of ba Babylon were so thick that chariot races were held on top of them. In their mind, they were invincible. However, if you can't break down the walls, go under them. In 539 BC, during a national feast, Cyrus, the great king of the Persians, did just that. The Ephrates River ran through the city of Babylon and was protected by metal gates which were in the water to secure entry. During a grand national festival in the center of the city, the Persians diverted the water of the river, broke through the metal grates, which were no longer in the water, and entered the city with his army. The Persians also conquered the outlying areas of the city, while most Babylonians who were at the city center were unaware of the breach. The evil nations or the evil nation who conquered and destroyed nations to build an invincible city still couldn't protect himself from the long arm of the Lord's righteous wrath. Okay, let's dive into the next interesting point and we can call it the result. Because we want to dive into the point of the verse you have devised shame for your house. Throughout scripture Babylon represents opposition to God. It is indeed a great shame on their house which will live on forever. And we'll give you three examples from scripture. First, at the Tower of Babel. They sought to oppose God's will. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth, as we can read in Genesis 11. Second, the Babylonian Empire. This passage was written in Isaiah as a toned song against Babylon. How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn! How you are cut down to the ground, you who led the nations low! You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven, above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high, as you can read in Isaiah 14. The shout of an angel in Revelation. Another angel, a second followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon, the great, she who made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, as we can read in Revelations 14. And third, 
the great whore in Revelation. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the great mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, as we can read in Revelation 17. And it is ironic that while Babylon represents opposition to God, God still used them for his own purpose to discipline his own people. And then we can safely say that God is indeed in control of all things. And the last interesting point, the consequences. You have forfeited your life and the judgment is death. In a prophecy from the Lord in Jeremiah 25 we read, But when the seventy years are fulfilled, I will punish the king of Babylon and his nation, the land of the Babylonians, for their guilt, declares the Lord, and will make it desolate forever. Never again in all of history has Babylon arose again. The bones of its ruins sit desolate, desolate in the deserts of Iraq. However, its legacy for greed, arrogance, injustice, violence and idolatry lives on forever. Indeed, they have shamed their house and forfeited their lives. To emphasize the point, God also uses an interesting figure of speech in, in this taunt. The stone will cry out from the wall and the beam from the woodwork respond. It is as if the stones and the woodwork stolen from other nations to build their cities and palaces cry out as witnesses to the evil of Babylon. They shout from the foundations and echo from the rooftops, longing for the day that Yahweh will bring Babylon to the judgment. Okay brothers, we all like to think we are in control of our life. However, verse 9 is an uncomfortable description of people who think they are in control, but are not. As the Babylonians conquered nations, they created buffer zones around themselves as a measure of security, although we now know it was all a false sense of security. Of course, we are not destroying people and nations to build ourselves up, but the attitude of setting up buffer zones around us and doing everything we can to protect ourselves is the same. What kind of buffer zones have you created? What people and things provide you with a sense of security. Having spare cash in the bank, a pension plan, family living close by, a comfortable house? Well, there is of course nothing intrinsically wrong with these things. But if we are not careful, they can lull us into a false sense of security. We trust them instead of trusting in God, in our Lord. Reflect on what it would mean for you to live with a true dependence on the security of Christ and His Word when we have so many material things that support us. Remember the words of the psalmist in Psalm 20. Some trust in char chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. And that's what we pray for each other. That's what I hope for you. And I hope for me to definitely say that out loud. Say that with all our, all our hearts. And may God bless you in that. And we hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.